What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. And moving on to the next question, we have to solve these three limits over here using the properties of limits or the limit laws that are listed out over here. So very similar to the previous video. So number two and three, I'm actually going to race for now just to give myself some more room for number one. And then once we uh, once we get to those, I'll write them back. So number one, we got the limit as x approaches negative two of negative three x squared plus five x minus two. Now notice that this limit is different than the video before. In the video before, everything was in terms of f of x, g of x, and h of x. And we were told what those limits were and we had to use the limit laws to sort of manipulate the expressions to get the expressions in terms of these limits individually. But notice in this question, we're given an actual function, right? We're not given f of x, g of x, h of x, etc. So that's the first thing to recognize. And whenever you're getting the limit of an actual function like this, using the properties of limits or the limit laws, you basically have to take this and get it in a way where it's either going to be in this format or in this format. So either in format one or format two, these two limit laws here, where you're gonna have the limit as x approaches negative two of a constant, where it's just gonna equal that constant, or the limit as x approaches a of x, which is just gonna equal a, which in this case, since we're approaching negative two, the limit as x approaches negative two of x is equal to negative two. So we gotta take this and use these limit laws here to get expressions one and two, to get this in terms of expressions one and two, all right? So if you're a little confused about what I just said there, let me show you how it works. It's gonna be pretty apparent when I do the example. So notice here, we're adding a bunch of functions. So we're adding negative three x squared plus five x minus two. So the first law that we would use is law number three. What we wanna do is kinda of take this limit and distribute it to these three separate functions. So we could rewrite this as limit as x approaches negative two of negative three x squared plus the limit as x approaches negative two of five x minus the limit as x approaches negative two of two. Right, so from here to here, we use law number three. You may be asking yourself that, why are we doing this? Because it's apparent that this is a parabola and we could just do a direct substitution. We could sub in negative two for all the x's and get the answer. But whenever they're asking for you to solve the limit using the properties of limits or the limit laws, you unfortunately have to do it this long way. All right, so now what we can do is work with each of these limits separately. And remember, we gotta get it into this format here, either law number one or law number two. So here, notice that we have the limit as x approaches negative two of negative three x squared. So notice that we can use law number six to take that constant out. Notice how the limit when x approaches a of c f of x, where this c is a constant, we can make that equal to taking the c out and then the limit as x approaches a of just f of x. So this here, we're gonna use law number six. So we're gonna rewrite this as negative three, limit as x approaches negative two of x squared. So I just took that uh, negative three constant out. And then plus here, we're actually gonna use law number six as well, because I could take that five out. So we're gonna have five on the outside and then we'll rewrite limit as x approaches negative two of x. And then we'll have minus, now notice that the limit as x approaches negative two of two, that is already in this format. The limit as x approaches a of a constant. Notice that two is just a constant. Whenever you have that, that's just equal to the constant. So the limit as x approaches negative two of two that is just equal to two. So that part of the question we are done with, and that was law number one. So notice that this was in one of the formats we're trying to get to. 
Okay, so whenever you have that, you could just put the constant. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of any constant is just the constant itself. Now, moving further along, this limit we have to um, we have to work with now. So notice that this we can apply law number seven on. So we have a function to a certain power. Notice we have this x to the power two. Well, we can rewrite that as the limit as x approaches a of that function, and then all of that goes to that power. So this we would rewrite as negative three limit as x approaches negative 2 of x, and then all of that's going to be squared. So going from here to here, we use law number 7. All right, so negative 3, and then this, we on this bracket, we use law number 7. We put that exponent on the outside. And then over here, we got 5, and then notice that this limit is in this format. Limit as x approaches a of x is just equal to a, right? Because we could sub in that a value for x and we would end up with a. So notice that that is in this format. So this bracket we can just pretty much write negative 2, right? And the law that we use is number 2. So that's why I'm saying getting it in terms of 1 or 2 because then once it is in that format you could just plug in numbers right, like we did over here, and then like we did over here. So this, is, uh, this ends up just carrying down minus 2. And then notice here now, again, we're going to use this law because it's in that same format over here. So we'll have negative 3, this would be negative 2, we still have that to the power of 2, this is going to be minus 10, minus 2. Okay, so here negative 2 squared is positive 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 10 is negative 22 minus 2. That just gives us negative 24. So that is the answer for number 1. And if we made a direct substitution here, we would get minus 24 as well. But again, we have to show this using the, uh, the limit loss. And then uh, over here, from here to here, we use law number 2. Right. So hopefully you're not getting confused with these uh, circled numbers over here. They're not numbers that are used in the, uh, in the math for this. They're just numbers to reference the, uh, the laws. So yeah, I agree. Kind of silly that you have to go through this just to get this number where you could do a direct substitution. But if they're asking these types of questions using properties of limits or limit laws, unfortunately, you got to do that. Now moving on to number two, we got the limit as x approaches two of negative four x plus one times five x squared plus three. So same thing, we're going to apply these laws, try to get in terms of one and two. So the first law, notice that we're multiplying two functions together. So we would use law number five first to split it up. So we would rewrite this, limit as x approaches two of negative four x plus one times the limit as x approaches 2 of 5x squared plus 3. So that would be law number 5 that we use there. And now we could work with these two limits sort of separately. right? You could kind of pretend that you got these two separate questions now. And you got to apply the limit laws on them. So for this one, basically, uh, let's put this all I'm going to put this in a square bracket, and then I'm going to put this in a square bracket, just so you could keep track of what I'm doing here. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take that limit as x approaches 2 and apply it to both of these, because notice that we are adding stuff. So we're going to be applying law number 3. So this would be the limit as x approaches 2 of negative 4x plus the limit as x approaches 2 of positive 1. That's going to be in square brackets. And then same thing here, I'm going to apply that same law. So we've got the limit as x approaches 2 of 5x squared plus the limit as x approaches 2 of uh, 3. All right, so from here to here, for everything, we use law number 3. Okay, now let's go through 
each of these four limits separately. So this one, notice that we have a constant times a function. We could take the constant out, so we would use law number six. So this, let's keep that square bracket. This limit I'm gonna rewrite as negative four times the limit as x approaches two of x. Right, I took out that negative four. So here to here, I use property number six. Notice the limit as x approaches two of one, that's the limit as x approaches a of a constant. That's just equal to the constant. So we could just sub in for this here, we could just sub in that constant one. So over here I use law number one. This is in brackets. Over here, same thing, I could take out the five, uh, which we would be using law number six on. Again, that constant, so we'd have five limit as x approaches two of x squared plus, and notice here, limit as x approaches two of three, limit as x approaches two of a constant, it's just equal to that constant. So this was law number one to get that constant here. So now notice we got two more limits to work with. We went from four to two here because we were able to sub in those constants using law number one. Here, let's keep these square brackets. We got negative four on the outside, limit as x approaches two of x, that is this law. And that's just gonna equal that a value. So as we approach a, as we approach two, that is just equal to two right there. Then we have that plus one. So over here, from here to that two, we applied law number two. Uh, over here, what we gotta do is apply law number seven, because notice it's a function squared. So we can rewrite this as five, limit as x approaches two of x, that's in brackets, and that's gonna be squared. And then that plus three we could carry down. Um, and then, uh, what? Over here, this whole bracket we can just do, there's no limits here left, so negative eight plus one, that gives us negative seven. So this whole square bracket ends up being negative seven. And then notice here, we can directly substitute limit as x approaches two of x, that's just equal to two. Right, from here to here, we use the law number two again. And then we have to square that, remember that exponent on that outside, and then we're gonna do plus three, right? So all of this is just equal to that bracket. Now notice we'll have, and now we can just do math, right? So we could just do algebra. So two squared is four times five is 20 plus three, 23. So we would have 23 times negative seven, which would end up giving us negative 161. So that is the answer to this limit here. And this is the series of steps we took using these limit laws, how to get that. And you could check your answer by making a direct substitution. So if we sub in two for all the x values here, we should end up getting that same value. Moving on to number three, we got the limit as x approaches four of x squared minus two all over the square root of x plus five. So this one, notice that it's a rational function. So with rational functions, usually the first law that you're going to apply is this one over here, law number four, where we got to distribute this limit to the numerator and the denominator. So we would rewrite this as the limit as x approaches four of x squared minus two all over limit as x approaches four, the square root of x plus five. So from here to here, we use law number four. And then for the numerator, what I'm gonna do is notice that we are subtracting here. So we're gonna be using law number three uh, limit as x approaches four, x squared minus limit as x approaches four of two, all over. Now, notice that the denominator, we have the square root, that's the same. We can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches four 
of x plus 5 to the power of a half. Right, so we'd be using this law, number 7, because notice there's no square roots here. But remember, when you're square rooting something, or you're third rooting it, or fourth rooting it, that's the same as just taking it to a power of a rational exponent. So that's why I didn't write a uh, square root law, but you can write one if you want. Or you could just convert this to that, and then we would rewrite this using law number 7 as limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 5, and then all of this goes to the power of a half. Or you could square root that whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to keep the square root actually. I'm not going to use the exponent. So I'm going to rewrite this here as the square root limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 5. Okay, so from here, the numerator, I use law number 3. The denominator, I use law number 7. Um, okay, so let's continue on. I'm going to, running out of room here, so let me continue up here actually. So now, notice that we have what, three limits to work with. So this limit, limit as x approaches 4 of x squared, we're going to use law number 7 on again. So we would rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 4 of x, that gets squared, minus limit as x approaches 4 of 2, limit as x approaches a of a constant is just equal to that constant. So that would just end up being 2 right there. And we have the minus in the middle. Right, so for th from here to here, we use law number seven, and then from here to here, we use law number one. And then this is still gonna be all over the square root. Now here is where uh, students sometimes will just take four and sub it in, but that would be wrong. We have to use the limit law again, where we're adding. Notice that we're adding two functions here. Right, so we got to do a little bit more work. So just be careful with these things under a square root or in an exponent where there's more operations to deal with. Right, so this one here, we have to rewrite as the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus the limit as x approaches 4 of 5. Right, so we use law number 3 for that. And now we could sub in everything we need. This would just be 4, still going to be to the power of 2, right? Because it's in this format. So we could just sub in what that x is approaching. x is approaching 4 in this entire question. So this ends up being 4, this bracket. Then we have to square it. Still have that minus 2. And then this is going to be the square root of what? Here we sub in 4, right? Limit as x approaches 4 of x. Same thing as up here plus limit as x approaches 4 of a constant 5, which is just equal to that constant. Okay, so we uh, here we use law number 1 for the 5, and then for these two 4s here, we use law number 2. You may want to write these uh, numbers maybe in different colors. Maybe that's what I should do in these videos, just so you're not getting confused between uh, the numbers that we're actually using and the circled numbers to reference the laws. And then from here, it's just algebra. So we got 16 minus 2, which is 14, over the square root of 9, which is just 3. And so 14 over 3 ends up being the answer. You could check your answer, too, if you plug in 4 here. 4 squared 16 minus 2, 14. 4 plus 5 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. So 14 over 3 is the answer to this limit, and this is how we use the limit laws.